Hello everyone, this is Bentley, and today I wanted to do a short video about live food, and let me explain why. Uh, about two weeks ago we did a video covering how to pick eggs and hatch baby rainbows and what you need to do for the first month of their life, basically, in order to be successful with rainbows. Well, very recently Corey did a live stream on the Aquarium Co-op channel about um, how to raise baby fish, right? And there was a great conversation going on in the chat. And uh, I specifically was talking back and forth with Bay Area Aquatics, which shout out to that guy. He has a phenomenal channel about the difference between brine, the baby brine shrimp, and microworms as a food source for our baby fish. So I'd, I'd joke that I have a 30 minute dissertation. I'm not going to go that long. But what I want to do instead is explain why so many of the breeders out there will push baby brine shrimp and live baby brine and why it's so important. So if we look at microworms, right? Super easy to culture, very little work. Once you figure out how to keep the culture going, it's super easy. That's a little work to get them cleaned, but it's not that bad. Let's, let's be honest. If you've done microworms once or twice, it's pretty simple. Uh, a food that I suggest is like vinegar eels, which is very similar where it's a little bit of work when you're harvesting. I mean, not, not a lot of work, let's be clear, just a little touch compared to brine. Uh, it's slightly easier for most folks. But where it comes down to is some of the nutrient differences. So microworms specifically was the question. So let me answer that. Uh, there is some wiggle room in these stats. I want to keep it clear. It depends on the gut load. But typically in any given microworm, or if you do like a gram of microworms, for example, whatever, their composition by percentage of protein is about 48%. Now, there's all sorts of amino acids, and that's where it gets a little crazy uh, in, in lipids and things like that. But because it's a worm, we don't have as much calcium value either. The big thing is that protein number. Proteins and lipids are very, very important for our baby fish early on. Now, microworms you can feed right away. That's great. You can't do that with brine shrimp in the case of rainbows, which is kind of piggybacking on this video. But there's lots that can. It's like baby guppies, all your live breeders, um, lots of other fish too can eat something like a brine shrimp right away, where there are several fish that their babies are so small, like CPDs, for example, celestial pearl danios. So, so tiny, a lot like rainbow fish, that you have to have other micro foods. Now, this is where you'd look at things like paramecium or infusoria, but let's stick to these common live foods for now, because it's otherwise we get into a crazy realm of numbers and we don't want to go that crazy. Now, brine shrimp, on the other hand, is 61 to 62 depends on the numbers. Because live baby brine are basically pre-loaded, they're pre-prepared, um, they have a significantly higher protein content. So if you think about that, 48 to like 62 is almost 15% more protein. Also, live baby brine has a significantly higher amount of lipid by percentage. Um, now, significant is like five. It's not a lot. In the realm of Microfoods like this and percentages, if you're going from 25 to 30, that's a relatively large jump. It might not seem like a lot to us. It's like, oh, it's only 5%. But to a baby fish, that is the difference between, um, you know, be, maybe being fed twice a day versus being fed four times a day. Something like that. Now, where microworms struggle the most in certain species of fish, I have a cat being a problem. I need to pause to deal with a cat. One sec. Okay, now that I've dealt with the cat that wants attention. <laughs> so the, the, the lipid percent can matter a lot. Now let's compare this, say, to um, vinegar eels, right? And talk about why vinegar eels and microworms serve two very different purposes. He's literally under me, bumping me. Please don't bump my tripod. No, quit bumping my... Because he's sitting here shaking my tripod, rubbing all up over it. Come on. Go sit on the couch. On the couch. You, you want to come up here? I'm going to have to hold this cat. On the couch, buddy. Okay. Let's do this. So, um, vinegar eels are like 10 to 15%. Again, it depends on how you're keeping them. Across the board. Protein, lipids, all that kind of stuff. Lower than gut-loaded microworms. So... You can get them within about 5%, and that's pretty good. Now let's talk about where 
vinegar eels versus microworms. Why would you do vinegar eels over microworms? Let's say the fish is too small to eat brine shrimp right away, like a rainbow fish. Uh, there's several other examples, but we'll start with the rain rainbow fish kind of example. Vinegar eels will naturally stay toward the top of your water column. So if you have any fry that stay very top water, you want vinegar eels because they're going to sit up in the top of the water column and they're going to keep themselves suspended trying to get air. And then your little baby fish can dart around and eat them all throughout the day. Now, microworms, on the other hand, will sink to the bottom. So this is the opposite side of the spectrum. Maybe you're dealing with um, young carnivorous plecostomuses or maybe even something like a Corydora or something like that. Well, you want that food to sink to the bottom for those bottom feeder type fish. Uh, loaches, bichers, these are other great examples of stuff that's going to be on the bottom and stay low when it's young. That's where you really want microworms. If you were trying to do microworms for rainbows, once they fall to the bottom, they're wasted. They're gone. The rain baby rainbows aren't going to dive down. They're going to stay up in the water column no matter what. Even if they smell food, they're just going to keep looking at the top. So this is an example where you would choose one over the other purely for how it stays in the water column. Now, finally, why is brine shrimp so amazing and why do so many breeders use brine shrimp? So we talked about the nutritional value. Also, because it's a micro crustacean, it naturally has much higher in calcium. You know, vinegar eels, worms, these are all types of nematodes. They don't have the skeletal structure or an exoskeleton that creates that kind of small amounts of calcium that can be digested by a fish. The, the big thing is like it's an extra calcium source, right? That's a really big thing. Also, brine shrimp are really easy to culture on demand. Vinegar eels, microworms, grindle worms, all that kind of stuff. You have to kind of culture continuously. Now, most of those are easy cultures to keep going. That's not the problem. But I can go, oh, I need brine shrimp tomorrow morning or I need brine shrimp. I have brine shrimp going for tomorrow morning. I need brine shrimp for the day after that. Get eggs, put it in a hatchery, get it going. I know it's going to take 24 hours or so, sometimes 36, and they're just done. That's part of why brine shrimp is really, really popular. It's incredibly nutritious. There's great amino acid balances, um, slightly higher in some categories than any other food. And then there's a couple where it's a little lower, but the difference is high, very high protein, very high lipid. Uh, well, compared to other foods, it's not like super fatty, but it's a micro crustacean. And more importantly, small amounts of calcium. This is also why Daphnia is such a popular food for other people, for adult, uh, larger fish, not necessarily adult, but also for juveniles that are kind of larger fish, uh, say like, you know, Epistos and things like that, because it is, again, another micro crustacean. And it has very similar values to baby brine shrimp. Not quite as good. Brine is just amazing. But it takes a much harder amount of culture work to do than brine shrimp. That's it. This is why we, we stress brine shrimp so much. Uh, and I'm going to put a, a link to uh, some facts, and I'll, I've probably put them up here on the, the screen too, but um, just where I got this information. I've, I've known about this for a while, but a great set of research has been done on a couple of websites that are out there where you can look at um, some information, culture information, nutrition values in some cases of lots of the live foods that we Aquarius use, and it's actually really, really great information to have. So that being said, what I'd really like to know down in the comments, one, did you appreciate this small lesson and why live food, uh, why you'd select certain live foods? Uh, I think it's really important to target the fish you are raising with a live food if you're going to do them. And if you can do live foods, you always should. They're great. Uh, two, what live food would you use for what fish? Maybe you're breeding a specific fish. And now that I've taught you this, you'd be like, I now I need to be using that live food. I'd love to know that down in the comments below. Uh, if you didn't like this video, if you think that live food is too much of a struggle and I can't possibly do that, I raised my baby fish just fine on powdered flake, you can go ahead and hit the thumbs down twice. That's that's okay. But I'm telling you, you'd raise them even better if you use live food. Just saying. I know from experience. <laughs> also, every like super breeder I know, every fish farm, tons of live food. It's a big deal. So with that being said, uh, if you... If you can, if this is your first time seeing this, maybe you, you learned something new today and you aren't already a subscriber, maybe consider a little subscribe. Check out the community tab because often I'll put up polls over there about what content I want you guys to tell me you want to see first of the stuff I'm trying to do. And always, guys, thank you so much for watching. And stay awesome.
Good pause for a sec. Just a sec. Let the roommates get through. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Okay. I think we're almost done. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. You guys good? Okay. Start again. <laughs>